بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله وشكر الله وثانك الله سبحانه وتعالى for allowing us this opportunity الحمد لله to reconvene um, and speak about um, the ongoing series that I've been putting together and just discussing what uh, spirituality is and how people's approach, uh, especially in the modern day and age, that there are so many uh, options available to us. And there is so much out there um, available on the internet, in books, and there's so much resources available that people, subhanAllah, are just swept away. Okay, And when people can't seem to connect or find someone trustworthy to go and learn Islamic knowledge from, Islamic spirituality from, then the next best thing is whatever else is available. And that is fine to, you know, to, to an extent, but generally what tends to happen is that if a person doesn't have that deep understanding or at least a solid grounding within um, you know, the basics of deen, then this in itself can become very detrimental towards a person's uh, spiritual growth and their journey uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, before embarking on the journey, you know, it is extremely, extremely important to understand what is the purpose of embarking on a journey. And with every journey that we embark upon, the, the whole point is that we should have a destination in mind. And the destination is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ And run towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your sayr ilallah, your, your, your journeying and your you know, efforts are towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the vehicle that we need to use in order to go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah says, Urwatun wuthqa, this hold on to this rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala embodies the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa If that was a vehicle, if that was a vehicle, then the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is the is the vehicle in which we travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The journey is very clear. And especially in this modern day and age, we've we've you know started to use this word mysticism. Okay? Mysticism. Everything is mystical. And the people that use mysticism are the people that don't know the path directly. Okay? And unfortunately they are they are lost in the mist of it. And so they call it mist. Criticism, right and the reality is that the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the vehicle of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has been laid out very clearly very very clearly and it the difference is that it is between night and day there is no mist in this journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so it is very important that we don't get distracted along the way and so a few days ago I put up a post saying um what is not spirituality or what is not from spirituality? Because what, what we really need to understand is what is my objective? What is my objective um, in, in traversing this path? If, for example, I wanted to travel uh, from Manchester to London and I get on the train and the train leaves Manchester and then it's heading down and then it stops at various stations along the way. My destination is London. But if on the way the train stops at Birmingham and I go, mm, this looks nice. Oh, it, oh, things have changed. And I step off the train and I go and take a walk. Okay. Knowing that the train is only stopping there for five to 10 minutes. I jump back on <coughs> and I carry on my journey. And then the train stops again, Milton Keynes. So, oh, where's this place now? Jump out at Milton Keynes, go and take another walk. But now I get distracted in Milton Keynes. Now what's going to happen? The train leaves without me. And now I am lost and I am stuck in that new place which is not my destination. And so similarly when we are traveling and we stop at a transit airport, you know, they make sure that you will move along. Transit passengers turn this way. You have to go this way. Do not turn left. Do not check out. Your bags are not going to come out. You have to stay on the journey. And so my point with regards to the distraction of dreams and visions, this is something that has really grasped um, our people in this day and age, but it is not new. Okay, people have been distracted by visions right from the beginning. Okay, and so whenever people start to become spiritual or they think that they're becoming spiritual, one of the signs that's closely associated with it is dreams. 
and oh, I had this wonderful dream, or whatever I dream about happens. Okay, fine, this is Bashara. These are signs, these are not end goals. Okay, piety does not mean that you start having amazing dreams. Those dreams that you are having is just the, just motivation. It's just motivation. And then you get people, alhamdulillah, who have visions. Okay, so, you know, they're just sitting there and suddenly someone might pop up or they might start to see or they might be able to read people's minds. Subhanallah, this is not piety either. Okay, this is not piety. These are just symptoms of the ailments that you are suffering from along the journey. If you look at the books of the mashayikh of the ulama, they will tell you that these karamat are distractions for you from on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A good dream in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows upon you hidayah that helps you to become better within yourself. That alhamdulillah is a blessing. The Prophet sallallahu said that a true dream is 146th part of prophecy. 1 over 46 part of part of prophecy and so and wisdom and knowledge uh, and ilham inspiration is given to people okay through dreams but sometimes inspiration can just come you know sometimes when we're speaking and subhanallah allah opens up something on your on in your mind in your heart in your tongue and so it is narrated and so similarly that is one part that one is the the dreams itself another part is visions that some people are very spiritually sensitive and they are open to different and and ultimately visions um, open up through the lifting of the hijab okay so the, in, in front of our eyes there are many spiritual veils and if Allah wants those veils are lifted it's for you to be able to see certain things and to see certain things does not make you pious okay to see certain things does not make you pious like someone says oh that guy there he sees jinns or she there She's seen all sorts of things. Okay, fine. But donkeys see jinns. Dogs see jinns. Cats see jinns. Okay. And so it's not something that we as insan should think, wow, because cats and dogs are doing that. Donkeys are doing that. Animals are doing that. And so what we need to really understand is on the path, there are many, many distractions. And one of the distractions that a person is given as a test if they are truly focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the gift of karamat, is the gift of miracles that manifest on the people that are on the journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if this starts to happen, and if a person, and this is why I think in one of my very first videos and posts, I said it is so, so important to understand the workings of the nafs and how the nafs begins to uh, inflate okay and just starts thinking that oh yes i am so good i'm so good and so he keeps going into this zone and a story comes to mind of uh, a student of imam al junaid al baghdadi rahmatullah alayhi, that he was a student with the sheikh for a long time and then he said to the sheikh he said look sheikh you know i've been with you for so long i've learned so much please give me a jaza so i can go back to my village and um you know continue to teach uh, you know everything that I've learned to the people there because they are deprived and so the sheikh gave him uh, nasiha and he gave him ijazah and he said okay off you go and then carry on sometime later Imam Junaid al-Baghdadi rahmatullah alayhi had you know inspiration in his heart to say that you know what something is not right I need to go and check my student and so he left to go and see the student now, as he got closer to the student's village, he had sent a messenger ahead to say, um, you know, to ask Ijazah that, look, the sheikh is coming to see you. And when the student of, who was of the sheikh realized that my sheikh is coming to see me, he said to himself, you see, now even the sheikh knows who I am. And so he is coming to see me. Okay, amazing. So something's going on here. And the sheikh went and uh, he met with him and, you know, the student hosted him and fed and all that and... And after all of that, the sheikh asked him, he said, so tell me, how are you getting on? What is going on? He said, oh, you know, a lot of work of the deen is happening and we're really pushing forward and blah, blah, blah. All of these things are happening. Alhamdulillah. He says, okay, what else is happening? Said the sheikh. He says, sheikh, you know, this has been so blessed that every night, you know, I get up for tahajjud and just as I'm about to pray, there's a knock on the door. So I go to the door and I open the door and the angels are waiting there for me. He said, angels? Yes, the angels are there 
with the garbs of paradise. And they come in and they put these clothes over me and they say, come and outside the burak is waiting. And so they take me and they put me on the burak and then the whole night we are just going around, flying around Jannah and I'm seeing the hoors and I'm seeing the gulam and I'm seeing all these blessings of Jannah. And then just before Fajr Adhan, they bring me back and I come back into my house and I get ready for Fajr. And the Shaykh said, Mashallah, Mashallah, very good, very good, okay. He says, listen, tonight, inshallah, when you go, um, recite, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah, and keep reciting this. So the student said, sure. That night, the same thing happened, knock on the door, he opened, the beautiful angels are standing out there, and so they call him out to the barak, put their garbs on, and then they off they go. And on his journey, suddenly he realized, oh yes, my teacher told me to do this. So now that to the blessings of my teacher, I've got so much now, this is going to take me even higher. And so he started reciting, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. And as he is doing this, he starts looking around and he starts noticing that the lights that he is seeing of Jannah, the, uh, you know, the, the translucent, um, you know, angels that are walking him are starting to lose their glitter. Okay, the light is starting to fade. And suddenly he sees that subhanallah, these angels are actually jinnat. And the burak that he has been riding on was a donkey. And the jannah that he was being taken around was the city dump. And subhanallah, this is what happens when your ego becomes inflated and when shaitan takes over and then you start seeing things that you think you are seeing but they are not reality. And subhanallah, when he saw this, he came running back to his sheikh and he fell in his feet and he asked for forgiveness. And he said, Ya Shaykh, please forgive me, forgive me and all the rest of it. And again, you know, Shaykh Imam al-Junaid al-Baghdadi was able to do his tarbiyah. And this is what happens a lot of the time is we do not spend enough time with our teachers to learn what the necessary basics are. And instead, we start to focus upon the excitement Okay, and subhanAllah, we, you know, it's, it's always, uh, it's, it's by fitra that we are seeking excitement and we are, we are seeking um, something new and something different. And in reality, these are the things that cause us the most problems. These are the things that break up families. These are the things that break people's hearts. These are the things by which cults exist today within our, our deen. Okay, and this is something that is very important to understand. It does not matter. It does not matter if people are telling you, I am seeing the Prophet ﷺ in my visions. I'm seeing him in my dreams. Go on, alhamdulillah. May Allah make it real for you. But if this person is claiming that I am seeing the Prophet ﷺ, but yet his behavior does not change, his akhlaq and his adab is not changing, yet he free mixes, you know, with the opposite gender and he touches the opposite gender, then... What sunnah is he on? What lights of the Prophet ﷺ is this person absorbing for him to continue behaving in this manner? And so this is what I, I've been trying to highlight. That the importance of understanding the message within the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is that there is no spirituality. There is no spirituality if the Qur'an and the sunnah are abandoned. Let me give you another example of the great Sheikh again, Imam al-Junaid al-Baghdadi rahmatullah alayhi. He had a khadim, he had a servant, you know, uh, that used to, you know, always be by his side and, you know, prepare things for him and look after his household and all the rest of it. And he served the Sheikh for 20 years. 20 years he was by the Sheikh's side. And after 20 years he said, Sheikh, give me ijaza, I would like to leave. And Imam al-Junaid said, okay, sure, you can go. Why do you want to go? And so the student, well, the Khadim said, you know, Hazrat, I've been with you for 20 years. And in 20 years, I've never witnessed you perform any miracle. I've not seen you fly into the air. I've not seen you walk on water. I've not seen you turn, you know, rock into gold or diamonds. I've not seen anything. He goes, oh, okay, okay. Is that the reason? He goes, yeah. He says, I've been with you to, to see these things and to learn and to, you know, get motivated by it. He says, okay, 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 fine. He says, yeah, if that's the reason, then yeah, of course, you can leave. 
And as the Khadim was about to leave, he said, oh, by the way, tell me one thing. I just want to find out that in the last 20 years that you've been with me, have you ever seen me abandon a single sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ? And the Khadim thought about it and he said, no, I see you fulfilling every sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And so the Shaykh said to him, he said that to fulfill one sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is better than all the karamats, all the miracles that you are in search of. Subhanallah. So people, we need to understand what is it that we are looking for? What is it that we want? And what is, what is our state when we have a few good dreams? And the biggest problem that's going to happen, subhanAllah, and I've seen it, okay, I've been around the circuit, I've been around the block, I've been around the block over and over, right? I've, I've repeated mistakes many times just to be sure. And I see this same pattern in every, you know, few places that I go to, that people, when they start experiencing goodness and good dreams and, you know, elevated states of Iman, the nafs inflates with them also. And suddenly they become, you know, they collar suddenly from being down, they go up like that. Okay, that now there's something. The turban gets a bit bigger, you know, and they walk around looking down on people. This is not spirituality. This is not spirituality. Okay, just because you are Fulan, Fulan, Sheikh, Fulan, Bin, Fulan, Fulan yourself. Okay, if you are still at the mercy of of your nafs Psst, that's what it is even Yazid okay look at Yazid look at the example of Yazid he had he was a son of a Sahabi he lived in the Khalifa's household where the Qurra and the Muhaddithin and the Hufaz and the Qurra and the, you know the Munshideen and everyone he was surrounded by good people he was surrounded by good people and the salahs were being done on time and the adhan was being done on time and the praying was done on time and he had knowledge of the deen and everything was at his disposal. But what destroyed Yazid? What destroyed Yazid? It was his nafs. Because his desire was more inclined towards women, music, alcohol, all of these desires that we turn away from. Okay? And in that sense, subhanAllah, what has happened? What has happened just because you belong to a pious okay, uh, household does not give you access rights for piety? Oh, but my father is a big sheikh. But what about you, you khabis? Do you understand? And, <laughs> and so, please people, do not be fooled okay, by the journey that lies ahead. Do not be fooled by the fact that you know, you had a good dream once. Good dreams are there to motivate. Good dreams are those chocolates that you get when, you know, you did well in your school test or whatever it is. And it is a pat on the back. It does not, it does not give you that, um, that, that, that stamp of approval of piety and that you never fall back. No, that journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires us to go through different states. We all begin at nafse ammara, okay? The self-enticing soul that it calls you towards evil consistently. But then when you move up into nafse ammara, uh, lawama, this is the reproachful soul. Now you've got a bit of a brain and you think, you know what, I shouldn't do this, it's bad. Oh, today's Friday night, I shouldn't do this. Oh, I should, Juma today, I've got to be a bit more pious, okay? And so you hold back. You have to hold back. And then you move up in your piety to Nafsul mul mulhima, where your nafs is now inspired and it calls you towards good. But even that a person is at nafs mulhima stage, they are not safe. And this is what I see around us today that a lot of good scholars, mashallah, that are, you know, um, motivational and they're inspirational and they're good people, they are in the mulhima stage. Okay, that they are inspired and they are, you know, doing the work of deen and they wholeheartedly, alhamdulillah, making effort. But they are still not out of the woods. Still not out of the woods. Until you get to nafse mutma'inna. And mutma'inna is a content, serene soul. And there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna 
irji'i ila rabbik O oh, you contented soul now return back to your lord and so in this state and that is the state that we need to aim for and know that that journey is long and that journey is tedious that spirituality that you and me are looking for is not found in a book is not found um, on a youtube clip is not found in you know going subhanallah i had a <laughs> i had a question the other day um, are we allowed to go to ayahuasca retreats okay yeah and for those that don't know ayahuasca it's a uh, south american plant that's mixed up and then you drink that solution and it goes into your tummy and then throws everything up and to such an extent that you pass out in your own vomit and then your mind is opened up and then you have visions and now our muslims are wanting to do this okay people that i know have come and told me yes we went on these retreats and uh, we saw such and such and such and such i said good tell me more and in the end subhanallah it's always a slap in the face intoxicants are haram people intoxicants are haram you cannot tell me that i had ayahuasca and then i passed out in my own puke and then i had this experience and in the experience i had wali allah's talking to me one person said i went and i saw the prophet billah. okay and so what are we doing people you know and this is just mockery mockery of the deen mockery of spirituality and it is your nafs having an absolute field day out with you so my message here is please calm down please look at what is important L understand what needs to be done first because if you are in search of spiritual highs that's available even without you believing in the deen okay i can grab hold of any uh, non-muslim sit them down with me 10 15 minutes and then they'll have an experience no problem that's that's okay but this is not what our deen is about is it our deen is about istiqama our deen is about um, loving for your brother what you love for yourself and so islam is that which people are safe from your tongue and your hands islam is about uh, giving salam it is about feeding the poor and to wake up at night and pray when everyone is asleep this is our deen so if you are in search of visions if you're in search of dreams if you if you want um, to be able to mind read i remember i used to be uh, i used to know brothers <clears throat> who were in in, in, in this tariqa and um, one of them one of one of a relative of mine he he was doing so much dhikr so much dhikr that automatically you know his his faculties were opening up and he said um, i know what people are thinking okay so <laughs> and in that he he knew well he thought he knew that person saying this about me that person's laughing at me that person's doing this and so rather than actually you know going and getting better within yourself all he was doing was hating on other people and becoming suspicious of everyone around you yet allah is saying do not become suspicious of others do not start to spy on other people do not do that and yet the same things that allah is telling us not to do people are becoming spiritual and then doing the same thing and so this is not spirituality people and so there's the spirituality of the ruh there is another spirituality which is the spirituality of the nafs and this is where most people are stuck on all the experiences that they've had and they've felt pious within themselves and all the rest of it is not your ruh your ruh is pure your ruh is from allah your ruh needs to connect back to allah but yet the spirituality that we enjoy is the spirituality of the nafs because it makes you feel good you know the shaykh gives you a dhikr and you go allah 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 and you start feeling good but then a week later it doesn't feel that good oh then now shaykh give me another zikr now come on let's 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 pump up the volume pump up the volume come on more okay shaykh says okay do another ten thousand more okay and then he feels even better and so we become servants of feelings and not servants of allah we become servants of our feelings and our feelings come from our nafs yet with allah it's about istiqama with allah it's the long run with allah it's planting the seed and waiting your weeks months and years before that tree comes into full bloom and is able to bear fruit but what we want is put the seed in use a 3d printer zzz, zzz, spirituality way 
and it's not happening people and these bouts of spirituality won't last long okay and this is why understand who you are understand who is your nafs understand who is your rub understand what is your journey understand what is your objective understand what is required for you to traverse this path and ultimately if you did nothing else other than just stop your sins okay that's all it is about do your best not to sin and if you end up sinning then follow it up with a good deed if you end up sinning then you have up to six hours as the prophet said in which you can make tawbah and say ya allah forgive me for this wrong if you've wronged someone else then rush to go and sort that out straighten your affairs with people this is spirituality people this is spirituality the ability to wake up at fajr and then to sit do some dhikr to read quran after fajr this is spirituality to deal nicely with people spirituality to be able to read your salatul duha spirituality to smile in the faces of people and give them hope spirituality but to be pompous and arrogant because i'm pious because my imama is so big and my dari is so long and my belly sticks out the most does not make you spiritual does not make you spiritual holding on to a tasbih doing allah allah all day yet having bad opinion of everyone around you is not spirituality so i hope inshallah this is um, you know getting through uh, maybe some harsh words but there's no direct attack on anyone okay i'm simply just throwing out some of my thoughts regarding this matter because there's a lot of people that feel and they think that this is what spirituality is they love to do their yoga they love to do their um, chanting they want to use music bowls they want to um, you know look for dreams and visions and they're looking for angels you know every time they take a picture and they see some sort of a, uh, a you know like light twinkling oh it's an angel in my photo astaghfirullah okay. <laughs> and so please people please you know just just uh, come down ground level live on this earth while you can okay because in the afterlife we have to live in the hereafter anyway so all of those things that we are not seeing at the moment we will see them later anyway we will see jannah and we will see all the blessed souls and we'll be with them inshallah in jannah but for now focus on where you are focus on your family and focus on your environment and focus on your structure focus on the basics that you can do if you're not able to pray your salah and this is what i find with a lot of these spiritual people is they will miss their salah they will not pray in jama ah at the mosque when they used to be able to okay and instead they will sit and do dhikr all night and then miss fajr as well <laughs> yeah so subhanallah it's um and as i was saying to someone the other day that you know when a person enters into this world of spirituality it's like falling into love okay it's like falling in love with someone that you know you just like it just feels so nice okay but very soon that feeling of all lovey-dovey disappears because then the reality hits you that there's only so much dhikr i can do there is only so much of um, dancing that i can do so many qasai that i can memorize after that what now you have to put the slog in when you have to start living with that person you claim <coughs> that you, you claim to love that's where your test is so may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to remain steadfast, even if it is little. <coughs> Alhamdulillah wa shukr. Okay, so jazakallah khair inshallah. <coughs> I hope that you found this useful. Please share inshallah and we'll catch you again next time. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik. Nashadu Allah ilaha illa anta nasta'afiruk wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum.